the job demands resources model of Bakir and Dim. Let me show you a quick overview of the model. The job demands resources model, as the name it says itself, uh, focuses on job demands, job resources, and predicts burnout, work engagement, and all kinds of individual and organizational outcomes that result from burnout and engagement. The model starts off with defining job demands and job resources. Job demands are all physical, psychological, social or organizational aspects of work that require sustained physical, cognitive or emotional efforts of people. These could reside at various different levels. For example, at the task level, job demands might include interruptions, you're being disturbed while being working very concentratedly on a particular task, or techno stress. For example, you're a host and you need to give people badges, but there's something wrong with the technology to scan their passports, and hence you experience a job demand. Job demands might, might also reside at the level of work, for example, if you need to do a lot of work in terms of workload or when it's quite ambiguous or unclear what you actually need to do. Job demands might also be at the team level, for example, when you experience role conflict. Somebody else asks you to do a task that really doesn't align with your own values or you get two different um, tasks from two different people with the same deadline. Job demands uh, can also reside at the organizational level, so for example, reorganizations would also be considered a job demand. Job resources are all these physical, psychological, social or organizational aspects of work that can do either one of these three things. First, buffer for the amount of job demands and the psychological and physical costs. Secondly, job resources are functional in achieving work goals and job resources are valuable in and of themselves because they stimulate growth and learning. What all aspects can be job resources? Well, some examples at the task level, getting feedback might help you to achieve your work goals, so it would be considered a job resource. At the level of your work, autonomy or having the possibility to make some decisions yourself and being able to use your skills might also help you grow and learn. Hence, it is, these are also considered job resources. At the team level, social support is an important job resource because we know that social support might buffer for having too much workload to do or having um, uncertainty about which uh, tasks you need to take on and hence may buffer for the uh, negative implications of job demands. Finally, at the organizational level, career possibilities, for example, might be considered a job resource. Burnout has a long history within research. Already in the 1970s, Freudenberger described how healthcare workers working with drug addicts were initially very enthusiastic about their job, but all of a the sudden they weren't out and didn't really have much energy left. Maslach came to the same conclusion at the opposite side of the uh, United States. She saw that people working with others really could lose their energy and interest in work. Today, Burnout is considered a syndrome which exists of different aspects. The first aspect is exhaustion, being exhausted or worn out by uh, the job. You don't, just simply don't have any energy left. What happens if you run out of energy? Well, a healthy thing to do is take more distance towards the job. So, for example, a nurse could no longer think of Mevrouw Verhoeven in room 305, but say, the one lying 305 needs XYZ. So she's not considering the person anymore, not the patient, but calling um, a particular room as when she needs to discuss uh, some assistance. Finally, if you don't have any energy left and take a cynical approach towards work, what could happen is that you experience reduced personal efficacy, that you don't no longer experience the feeling that you can do a good job and hence um, you start to doubt yourself even more. Opposite to burnout is engagement, and engagement is defined as a positive, affective, cognitive state of fully functioning which is characterized by figure, dedication and absorption. Quite a mouthful. What does it mean? Well, engagement is also a syndrome existing of three different aspects. First of all, there's figure, or having a lot of energy for your work. Secondly, there's dedication, which can be considered the opposite of cynicism. Having been dedicated to your work means that you want to invest in it and you have an approach orientation. As a nurse, you would, for example, really be concerned of Mevrouw Verhoeven and ask about her family and friends. 
if you have a lot of energy for work and are dedicated to your job, you might also experience absorption. Absorption means that you lose track of time because you're really involved in work. Let's have a look at the relationships within the job demands resources model between job demands and job resources on the one hand and burnout and engagement on the other hand. First, let's have a look at the main effects. The relationship between job demands and burnout is considered to be part of an energetic process. Based on other theories such as the stress adaptation model and the state regulation model of compensatory control, the job demands resources model assumes that job demands wear out people's energy. For example, if you have a tight deadline or a lot of work to do, the first thing that you will do is take all your energy that you have in your body and try to fight the deadline for example. However, if this feeling lasts for too long, your energy levels might wear out. What happens then? Well, a flight reaction. Then you might start taking distance towards uh, your work. The second deadline in a row, or even the fifth or fifth, uh, 50th, well, after a while, you just can't bear it anymore and you start feeling cynical about your work. Maybe you have the feeling that you can't do a good job or you feel that the organization is not really doing a good job in um, keeping you um, alive and kicking and supporting you. Hence, you develop cynicism. So the energetic process explains why job demands may wear out uh, employees leading to burnout. Secondly, there is a motivational process between job resources and both engagement and burnout. Job resources might be motivational in an extrinsic way because they help you to achieve something else. For example, having a lot of job resources such as skill use or autonomy might help you to achieve the goal in meeting the deadline. This means that uh, you feel self-efficacy, you feel you can do something. There is a social exchange relationship. Yes, there is a deadline, but nevertheless, you um, feel really supported by the organization and hence levels of burnout might decrease. On the other hand, job resources might have an intrinsically motivation potential just because they fulfill the psychological contracts or the basic psychological needs needs they help in growth and learning uh, or the accumulation of resources is just considered something good in and of itself what is a psychological contract well the psychological contract is a relationship you have with your uh, employer, or at least the, relation thing, the relationship you think you have with your employer about a mutual uh, exchange relationship. Having a lot of job resources might give you the feeling that you're really being cared for. Satisfaction of the basic needs links back, back, back to self-determination theory, which assumes that people need autonomy, competence and relatedness in order to feel well. Job resources may contribute to that. Job resources may thus increase engagement because they help you to achieve goals, extrinsic motivation, or because they're valuable in and of themselves, intrinsic motivation. According to the same processes, they might also decrease burnout. What about interaction effects? Do, does the combination of job resources and job demands do something different than just uh, their main effects considered in and of themselves? Yes. According to the job demands resources model, job resources buffer for the negative implications of job demands. I might have been alluding upon it already. Job resources help us to overcome the negative eff effects of job demands. For example, social support from your colleagues, having the possibility to talk about your worries about a particular project or unclarities about what you need to do. If you have such a conversation in a water cooler with your um, uh, fellow colleagues, then you might decrease the negative implications of, for example, role ambiguity. So, job resources can buffer for the negative implications of job demands, for the relationship between job demands and burnout. On the other hand, in job demands resources model scholars also assume a boosting effect, which means that job resources become particularly um, valuable in predicting engagement under demanding circumstances. When do you value the social support of your colleagues most? Indeed, when there is something to complain about or help to be asked.
The buffer and boost hypotheses are both based on conservation of resources theory, which assumes that we want to accumulate as much as resources as possible, um, and because these resources also help us to overcome particular problems. The job demands resources model is a very broad model. It puts burnout and engagement as focal outcomes of job demands and job resources, but also considers that burnout and engagement are the starting point for a whole lot of other outcomes that might come from the experience of job demands and job resources. First, there's well-being health. Research has shown that job demands and job resources through burnout and engagement might explain why people get psychosomatical complaints, such as a headache you can't really um, explain in a running nose. Other studies have linked job demands resources model to depression and even post-traumatic stress syndromes or musculoskeletal problems. Also, when you have lots of job demands and few job resources, you have less of a holiday effect which means that if you take a holiday, you don't really feel a long after effect. Secondly, job demands and job resources might also influence your attitudes towards your levels of burnout and engagement. The more you have uh, job resources and the less job demands you have, you experience more job satisfaction, commitment, less turnover intention, so you're less inclined to leave the organization. And interestingly, having lots of job resources and a manageable uh, amount of job demands also helps you to accept more organizational changes. But outcomes aren't limited to just well-being and attitudes. Job demands and job resources through burnout and engagement also have implications for burn behavior. For example, people who experience a lot of demands and fewer resources, they are likely to be more present when they are sick, which is called presenteeism. Although employers might think that presenteeism is something good, actually coming to work sick has negative implications. First of all, the employer needs to pay you, although you're not performing at 100%. Secondly, you might also spread your disease to other people at work, causing even more problems. So presenteeism is not something we would strive for. Job demands and job resources also have implications for people's absenteeism, so for them uh, leaving work for a while because they call in sick. It might not only be temporary that you leave your job, but even you might leave the um, occupation, such as when nurses go uh, and become teachers rather than staying in a nursing home or in a hospital. Job demands and resources, burnout and engagement might also predict early retirement as well as financial returns within teams. Very interestingly, Xantopoulou has done a study among uh, a Greek fast food restaurant and she showed that the higher levels of engagement within a team, the more hamburgers were sold. Job demands and job resources also influence the degree to which people uh, display extra role behavior. So for example, help a colleague or be innovative. Job demands and job resources, burnout engagement also have implications for the functioning of others, such as your colleagues and partners. There is spillover. If one person is very engaged in the team, others might become uh, more engaged too. And of course, there is a link between the work environment as well. When one colleague is more enthusiastic or more engaged because he or she experienced a lot of job resources and few demands, it's likely that other colleagues experience the same level of demands and resources. Within the job demands resources, we don't only look at the uh, environmental aspects, but also consider personal resources. Personal resources are those malleable lower order cognitive effective personal aspects of reflecting a positive belief in oneself or the world. They are also defined as highly, highly valued aspects relating to resilience and contributing to individuals potential to successfully control and influence the environment. That being said, personal resources can best be seen as personal characteristics, which can change, hence malleable, um, but help you to remain positive about your wor world and take action. For example, if you are, have a high score on self-efficacy, that means that you have a high score in being able to uh, change the things you think need to be changed. If you have a high organizational self-esteem, you think of yourself highly, not too highly not in the sense that you're showing off to others, but you believe in yourself and you're, you have a good uh, level of self-worth. 
Optimism is also considered a personal resource. Because optimistic people, they indeed uh, take more action to change um, their environment. Personal resources are said to have like three different uh, functions within the job demands resources model. First, personal resources are considered the antecedents of job demands and job resources. For example, people who um, are very optimistic, they likely experience more social support from colleagues because they're just nicer to talk to. People who are optimistic might also not experience so much workload because they think like, hmm, this amount of uh, files I can definitely handle by tomorrow. Secondly, personal resources are considered mediators of job resources, which means that job resources might reinforce personal resources and therefore lead to engagement. For example, if you get feedback in your job, your level of self-efficacy might arise and hence you might have more energy to put in your job. Third, personal resources are considered moderators or buffers of job demands. Much like job resources, they thus can um, soften or buffer the negative implications of job demands.